Amen. Good, good evening, church. How are you? Amen. It's good to be in God's house. It's good to be saved. Uh, Amen. Good to know that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It makes a world of difference. Uh, it's, it, uh, it doesn't matter what else goes on as long as you know you're saved. Uh, I mean, because uh, anything can happen. <coughs> You know, but uh, I, I love reading where the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. Amen. So I'm not I'm not worried about leaving this world or what's happening in this world so much. I care about it for our, our children and stuff, but you know what? God's still on the throne. He is. Amen. And God's still in charge. And ain't nobody going to do anything unless God gives them the authority to do it. So... Uh, I'm glad God's given us the authority to work <laughs> together in His name. He said, we're two or three together, together in His name, we'll be in the Amen. So I'm glad we're here tonight that we can gather ourselves together and that we can come boldly to the throne of grace on a prayer meeting tonight and seek help for all our needs and cares and desires. And I'm glad that you're here with us, you know. Uh, I, I, when it said two or three, I, I'm glad you're my two or three. I really am. And uh, we want to get right into our service and sing a few songs and, uh, and uh, then get into whatever God has for us. And, uh, uh, the, the preacher said it, or the pastor has said it many times. Uh, and I know, I know there's just a few of you here, so yeah, I'm talking to you. The windows are closed, the doors are closed, but the altars are always open. Amen. And so if you need to use the altar, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and pray. Whenever God likes on your heart, uh, somebody will pray with you, I'll pray with you. And uh, that's what the altars are for. If you got uh, if you got something to say, you know, you've got a testimony that you want to share with the, the church, by all means give it. It might be just this thing that somebody sitting next to you needs to hear. All right, let's get into our singing. Let's all stand turn page two nine. Wonderful peace. Far away in the depth of my spirit.
And the Brother Leanne, would you open our service with a word of prayer, please? Lord, thank you for this peace. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that we can put our head at night and think of you, Lord, and know you know us. That you protect us. That you love us, Lord, and you know that you love us. But we ask you to go with us in the rain for the service here today. Everything we do and say, we're pleasing to you. And that's all we in your name. Amen. How about page 220? <laughs> the love of God is granted for the time. The love of God. Forty-six. 
also remember, remember them too. And my brother Jack, he's still trying to get his strength back from, he swears it was pneumonia, but the way he, the symptoms, it sounds like it probably had COVID. The doctor told him it would take him probably six months to get over the pneumonia. To me, that's a stretch. So that's a long time. But remember Jack. I still remember her love was in that way it says. I still remember Jackie. And my, my, I believe the her, but she stayed overnight. She is, sir. And she stayed overnight. She's doing good, but she's staying overnight. And, uh, I'm sure they'll treat her well. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'll be glad to see her get out of there. Go ahead, sister. She is, huh? No? <laughs> no, I thought you did. Sorry. So what? Remember Jan, she's still having vision trouble. She's waiting for her surgery, which is early February, so. Anyone else? Well, Mike, uh, Holly called me today before church, and her and John are both under the weather. And so uh, they'd like us to remember them. Let's remember them. And let's pray for our service tonight. And let's not forget to pray for our nation and pray for our leaders. Uh, me and Ms. Nwana were talking before church, and it's... You can take the person or the party out of it. The Bible doesn't say to pray for the person or the party. It says to pray for our leaders. Right. Right. Several places it tells us, gives us instructions. So we need to pray now like we always have. And so let's continue to pray for our nation, for our leaders. Uh, as we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, you said that because we remember I had an opportunity to uh, speak with Cookie. And Cookie asked, uh, she wanted the church to let them they would know that she missed it. She desires the church's prayers to remember her and her family too. Someone else? Okay. Um, sorry. I believe there are, I, you know, I, I wanted to peek on Sunday, but I believe there are, I didn't. Because Brother Joe told me to keep my eyes closed, but he said, God bless you, to a couple people who raised their hand. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm getting that burden on my heart too for those people who come in here and, uh, you know, they have a spiritual need in their life. and. Let's pray for those guys. And then, I hope, you know, hopefully we can see a break loose for us again. Yes. God bless you, Michael. Amen. 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 Somebody else. But like we need, to, we need to pray for all our brothers and sisters for one reason or another why they can't come to church you know, until we can get back in church. Amen. When it's the COVID or whatever, just pray if we can get back in church. Amen. Let's nice. Amen. Let's remember. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, also. Kim's got a head cold. Um, you know, some uh, some people may think, well, that's that's nothing. But you know, <coughs> God said, cast our burdens upon Him. He didn't say just the big ones. Uh, you know, pray about anything, everything. Everyone's big one. It doesn't matter. Amen. Remember her. Someone else. If I missed you, it's because my glasses are fogging up tonight more than normal. I don't know why. <laughs> I tried to adjust my mask several times so that it wouldn't do that, but it's still doing it. Um, if not, any unspoken requests, raise your hand. If you'd like to, come around the altar to pray, or if you want to pray right where you're at. But uh, let's take these needs to the Lord. Brother Connor, you need us tonight for prayer. Father, in heaven, as we call
good to know that our life is in God's hands and we're a child of God. Amen. And that uh, things may happen like this. Things may happen worse than this. Who knows what uh, situation we're going to find ourselves in uh, tomorrow. But boy, if, you're, if your hand is in God's hand today, we don't have to worry about tomorrow because we know the one that holds tomorrow. And I'm thankful for that. So I pray, Lord, that you would bless the reading and studying of thy word as we look to it tonight. If you've got a point you want to bring out or a question, I certainly don't claim to have all the answers. But we'll try to look at it together. And God's word is here for a purpose. And he Amen. wants to feed us. He wants to learn us and mature us and grow us as Christians. And I look forward to our time of Bible study because it's different than a preaching service on a Sunday morning. You don't usually stop and take questions at a preaching service, but you have time to ask questions. People have a chance to add to it. And that's what makes the discussions rich. So... Please feel free. So, uh, Jeremiah told them there, and um, uh, back up where we finished last week, verse 21. He said, Yet I planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into this degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? For thou, though thou wash thee with much snider and take much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord. And he was telling them, You can get into a place, and friends, you can wash and scrub as much as you want to. And, uh, and uh, it won't matter. It won't wash away the type of sin, the type of stains we're trying to get rid of. Amen. We know the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. That's very plain about that in the New Testament. But listen to what he says here as we move forward in verse 23. He says, how can thou say, he's speaking to Israel, I'm not polluted. I'm not gone after Balaam. See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. Kind of reminds me like uh, Joey, my oldest boy, when he was in school. Marcy would say, where's your homework? He'd say, I forgot it. It's just like you have these people here. How can you say you've not gone after other gods? You've not, the, the, the evidence is before us. The evidence is overwhelming. How can you say that? And yet people want to deny the truth all the time, don't they? And spiritually, is a, spiritually the truth is what's most important, friends. You can never, ever get saved until you realize you're lost, right? And it's going to be hard for Israel to get back on track with God until they realize what the position they put themselves in with these other with these other gods. And so he says, "You just like that. How can you not say you? you how can you say you've not gone after Baal and these other gods? Um, see the way. Uh, see the way in the valley. Remember, I mentioned before there it talks about shedding innocent blood. How they've gone down to the valley where children were sacrificed to this god Moloch. He says, "Know what thou hast done." Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. I didn't realize a dromedary was a camel. So I think he's saying here, you're like a young camel that goes where he wants to. His green has not been broken yet. You just go wherever you want to go. It doesn't matter what your master wants you to do. Wherever you want to go, that's where you go. And you're going to get yourself in trouble if you go where you want to go sometimes. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and then, then he draws a comparison over in verse 24. It says, a wild ass used to the uh, wilderness that snuffeth up the, air, the wind in her pleasure in her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month, they will find her. We don't have to get down into the nitty gritty here, but talk about a, a, a wild ass that's, that's coming to eat, and looking for the first, uh, first horse that can breed her. She's just going here and there, and, and wherever she goes, the, the other horses will take her in. Like you really kind of saying here, and not to get gross, but you're going whoring after other gods. And any God that suits your purpose, any God that, that, that fills whatever you think that your need is, if it's a fertility God, if it's an agricultural God, the God of the sun, the God of the moon, whoever that it is, uh, it just suits your purpose, that's where you're going to go. Just like this, this wild horse running around looking for someone. It says in verse 25, Withhold thy foot from being unshod. You get shoes for a reason. And thy throat from thirst... But thou says, there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers, and after all them will I go. That's that, that's that wild horse, and that's that young camel going wherever it wants to go, seeking out whatever, whatever it wants. And remember, he compared these other gods to these uh, human up sisters of own whole water. You know, a, a sister with holes on it won't do you no good. And these other gods that you're serving, this is the whole, this is the crux of the whole message you share with them about how they've made all these other, they've served these other gods, they've, they've uh, become influenced by these other people and these other nations, and, and, and uh, uh, not only are they taking on some of their customs, they're taking on some of their gods. And he's it's, it's trying to tell them, where are you going to be when you get into a place like Miss Jackie was last night? She was so glad, you know, prayer is important to Miss Jackie. 
Probably in the last year, she probably calls and puts up more prayer requests for people on one call than anybody. You know how many of them are for her? Probably about 1% of them. Mm -hmm. The biggest majority is because somebody else is in need. And uh, where are you going to go if you trust these other guys? And I guess let's just go on and talk about it there. It says, and verse 26, as a thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets. Now this is one of the biggest problems in church today. This is, I think, one of the biggest problems why people uh, don't have a real uh, salvation experience when they go to the altar. Because when you come to the altar, you, you can come because you are, uh, you are really, truly hurt because of the sins that have been pointed out and you repent. Or some people come because they're just sorry they got caught. They're, they're, they're sorry that they got caught in their sins. And there's a big difference between the two. When I was at the Belleville Free Will Baptist Church, I was saved there, I was raised there, I got married there, had our kids there. There's a girl I went to school with, she come by one night. I think it was a Sunday night. Her name was Jamie. And she come by and she 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 got saved when Jesse was a pastor. And uh, and she'd never been to our church before. She cried and cried at the altar. And uh, someone asked her, I believe it was Jesse, asked her, why'd you choose this church? She said, well, as I was driving by, I saw the name Free Will Baptist. And I figured I could just do whatever I wanted to do after I came to God. Because I had a free will. That's not exactly, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And you know what, you know how many times we saw her after that? Zero. Zero times. And so, this is, it says the thief is ashamed when he's found. When a person's caught, when, when a person's wrongdoing has been made known, but it's common knowledge, you don't feel too good about that. But there's a difference between wanting to get the guilt off your hands between truly repenting. You know, truly repenting means not only are you sorry you've been caught, but you're committed to going in a new direction now. You're so sorry about it, you feel so bad about it, you understand the price that Christ had to pay for it, that you're moved now to not only uh, be, be uh, guilty over it, but to turn your life in a different direction now and try not to do that same thing anymore. And, uh, I remember, I don't think my mind would me should share this. One Wednesday night, we were having a discussion up here about uh, after you get saved, um, you know, when you still sin. The Bible says if you say you have no sin in you, you're a liar. The truth is not in you. We're all going to sin and fall short. And when Ron said, what's, what's the deal about getting saved? I said, well, once you get saved, it bothers you now if you sin. It bothers you. You, 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 know, you know you've not done right, and the Holy Spirit speaks yeah. to your heart because the Holy Spirit's inside of you now. And uh, just like I said here earlier, that your own difficulties you got yourself into would speak to you uh, last week, that, 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 that bothers you now. And, and so uh, uh, we're glad the Holy Spirit abides within us and lives within us. We're glad it's there to show us when we've done wrong. And um, when we've done wrong, when we come to the Lord, we got to come and really uh, put her all on the altar. Really leave whatever it is that God's placed on our heart at His feet. Turn it over to Him. And uh, and don't just come up. So many folks today, and I think that uh, I think that the world, and the world has no business talking about Christianity, but the world sends a message out there about Christianity. And uh, the message is it's like, um, it's like Silas' favorite song there, page 46. I'd rather be an old-time Christian. You know, People, a lot of churches today would look at the way we worship as being old-fashioned. That's okay. I'm okay with that thing to do. And we, you know, we occasionally have a more modern song and, and whatever. But the way of salvation is neither old-fashioned nor there's only one way of salvation. Amen. There's only one way. There'll never be any other way. There's only one way. And when you come to God and you come and you realize the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. And you remember what that was like when the Holy Spirit burned your heart and convicted you. That's not a good place to be. That's about the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my life when the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And do you know that, uh, you know, I'll track here a little bit, but do you know that during the week, the way that you and I, the faithful few, the simple on Wednesday night and Sunday night, the more faithful we can be, the more close to God we can be, the more on fire we can be every day, all week long, that I believe with all my heart, uh, the more powerful the Holy Spirit can work on Sundays. I believe that. It's not that we have the power to affect people. But when we come in tuned up with our sins up, with our sins out of the way and covered in the blood of Christ, then, then the Holy Spirit can really focus in and zero in on those that don't know Him. Mm -hmm. But if He's got work to do with me, then I can't be uh, calling on Him to speak to those that are lost. And uh, that's that's a uh, that's a big thing here. So 
I wish more of not just this church, but more of the church at large, God's church, whatever the denomination or God's people, the truly uh, bought by the blood people, would understand the difference between feeling guilty about being caught in your sins versus being truly sorry and repentant of your sins. If someone come up to me Sunday after church and said, Pastor Joe, I want to thank you. I'm thinking, I don't remember doing anything for you. They said, I want to thank you for preaching and preaching repentance. I said, well, if that come across, good. That's good. But we need to repent. We need to really repent. Uh, How can you not repent if you fully understand the price that Jesus paid for our sins? It's, uh, it's amazing. So he then goes on in verse 27, saying about these idols. He says, and, and you're saying to a stock, thou art my father. I'm assuming maybe that's like a wooden stock to hold people. I don't know. Or saying to, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. <laughs> How are you going with it? boggles my mind that there are people are in our world today that still worship these man-made idols. But that's, that's why he said, how are you going to say to a stock, you're my dad. How are you going to say to a stone, you're my mom. You brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me. And not their face. But in time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. Right. So who are you going to really call? There you go, those, those sisters that don't hold water again. Are you going to really call upon the stock or the piece of stone when you're in trouble? Right. Oh, you're going to call upon the God of creation. Right. Out from Omega, the beginning and the end. It says in verse 28, Where there are, there are thy gods, thou hast made thee. Let them arise. If they can save thee in the time of thy trouble, for according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. So where are they? If they can save you when you're experiencing trouble, go ahead and call upon them. But if you, if you call upon them and you're not there, you might want to think about me. The, 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 the rivers of living water that you've forsaken, you might want to think about me. And he says, there's as many of these people as there are cities that you've gone to, Judah. There's as many gods as there are cities that you've gone to. Uh, verse 29 says, Wherefore will you plead with me? Will you have transgressed against me, saith the Lord? In vain I have smitten or corrected your children, and they received no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your people like a destroying lion. And it hit me today. I was taking a shower and thinking about my boys and praying for them. And I thought, you know what? We buy them to church. I don't, I don't never have believed in being a nag. I pray for people. I try and be a witness to people. When the Holy Spirit leads, we get a good chance. I invite people. And my boys are both saved. They're not in church right now. But uh, Lord willing, they will be one day. But Joey's got his own babies coming up. And so Joey's got to be concerned about more than just Joey now. If Joey doesn't expose Kate, Jacob and uh, Leah to church and to God, who's going to? The, the other options who are going to, they're going to fill in the knowledge of these babies about God are not very good options. I don't like what the rest of the world has to say about God today. And uh, me and Miss Marcy want to do our part. In fact, Jacob told him the other day before they ate, he said, stop, stop. He said, what? He said, we got to pray. And they said, will you pray? And I guess he didn't. He's prayed with us a couple times, but he didn't for them. But... Um, I'm thankful for the real, true God. And these other gods aren't going to help when you hit the time of calamity. Brother Joe? Yes? Do you think these people are here, they never had the Holy Spirit in them? No, no. Not, not well, a lot of them. The Holy Spirit was the prophets. Right. Yeah, that's what I think, John. Anyone else got something to add to that? The Holy Spirit... It seems like in the Old Testament, outside the prophet, that the Holy Spirit arrived on occasions. He, right. he, he responded to situations and occasions, but didn't abide within the hearts of people like he did in the New Testament when Jesus went away and said, I won't leave you come from us. Right. He says in verse 31, O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords, we will come no more unto thee. He's, he said, have, have I been hard to find? Have I been a wilderness? Have I been a land of darkness? That you would go and say, I want to come to you, we'll find other gods. And I think that happens uh, in our current situation. The better things are going, the less people seem to lean upon God. The less they realize they need God. And even Paul talks about that. He says, when I'm weak, then am I strong? 
You know, when you're brought to a place where you're weak and realize you can't do it on your own, that's where you're really strong because you're not leaning on yourself anymore. You're leaning on God. Amen. And that's such a strength. That, that's such a truth. I mean, Amen. that's such a truth. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Let's reread uh, verse 31 because it ties into O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords, we will come no more unto thee. And then listen to the, the uh, analogy here. It ought to make a lot of sense uh, that he's given to the children of Israel and how they looked at God and forsaken him. He says, Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride be tired? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Miss Marcy, can you remember anything about your wedding dress? <laughs> can you remember anything about it? Did you have any jewelry on? How about you, Miss Candy? Can you remember anything about your wedding dress that what you were wearing? I remember what I was wearing when I got married. <laughs> Miss Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Alright. Miss uh, Tina? Yeah. Miss Nalani? Yeah, that's something that most most uh, brides don't, whatever it was, that's something they don't forget. Dave's back there saying, I don't remember what I was wearing that day. <laughs> you know, I, I, it was a rented tuxedo, so I can remember if I was wearing it. So that's why he didn't say it. What the bride, what the groom's wearing, right? He said, but can the maid forget what she's wearing on that day? The clothes that she was wearing or the or the, uh, the things that she adorned herself with? No. Well, if you can't forget that, how can you forget the God that led you out of the wilderness? How can you forget the God that helped you cross uh, the Canaan River into the Promised Land? But you can, you can remember something as... as uh, pardon me, ladies, as, as silly as what you wore on your wedding day. I know it's not silly. But compared to your relationship with God, but you can't remember me. What? So what are we? What has he? What has a, a lot of the church in our nation uh, forsaken God for today? They, we remember lots of other things, but uh, we had sixty two weeks ago and uh, forty nine last week. We're coming back a little bit, but we probably got. I don't know, 18 or 20 here tonight. And uh, oh, and we're thankful for everybody that's here. And I've never been one to pester or to, to, to get on people that aren't here. You can only be to preach to the people that are here. But um, what have people forgotten God for? What, what have they replaced God for? What's their idols? And, and uh, when well, we get down to this now, I'll bring it back up again. He says, oh, in verse, uh, verse, 32, uh, verse 33, why truest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou, therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. You see, it's not bad enough if you take a shortcut or you accept other gods, but it's something else if you drag somebody else along the way with you. And that's what's happened in our society today where you've got, uh, someone I was talking with here two or three weeks ago about this, it used to be a time you sit around, you have a family reunion or get together, go visit your grandparents or you see relatives come in from out of town. And it would be very unusual you didn't have some of those relatives that would be really good, dedicated Christians. And my papa used to, he used to make uh, cassette tapes for us and, 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 uh, and send verses and do little messages. And he never ever, because he couldn't write much, he'd never write anything, but he'd send us a cassette tape and he'd say, I always say at the end, I remember he'd say, Joseph, well, I don't ever see you again down here. I'll see you up there. That, that, that stuck in my heart. I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah. crying like a baby when I leave the little town of Coburg, Virginia down there and leave him behind. I, I couldn't go to sleep the night before because I'd be thinking about having to tell him bye the next morning. And I'd get one of those tapes in the mail and it means something to me. You know? And uh, uh, you have families now that don't got that. You have families that have gatherings and there's nobody sitting on the table. It might be for one, two, three generations. There's nobody there that's got a relationship with God. And so what, what happens? The, the nation is just going to drift further and further. So the ones that do have a relationship with God got to be stronger in their faith than ever before and let it shine brighter than ever before. Amen. Shine brighter than ever before. It says, also in thy skirts, it's in verse 34, is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret, but upon all these. So I, I, I don't know, I don't pretend to know what all he's talking about, but if you, he says, number one, it's not hidden. He said, that I didn't have to dig for this. It's not hidden. 
And if you tie that blood of the poor innocents back to that valley, that valley over there I talked about where they went down and they sacrificed the children, the God that they're sacrificing to is convenience a lot of times. I, 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 don't, I can't imagine another reason why that there would be abortion clinics would be so full and making so much money and so busy. So why government would want to keep abortion clinics open during this time of crisis we have with the pandemic? It's supposed to be keeping things open that preserve life? Somebody tell me how that preserves life. It doesn't fit the criteria. And so whenever that happens, if it happens just because of the reason of convenience, I, I'm too busy, this is not the right time in my life, that may be okay for you, but what about that precious innocent baby? There's nothing more innocent than that blood right there. And I know the argument is when, when does life start and it's not really life. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when it starts. Life starts when you have to take it to get rid of it. That can be anywhere along the spectrum. And who would have, there used to be debates about, about this at the at the. Uh, 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 a lot of debate about the early stages, but there was never any debate for years and years about abortion at the end stage. It's become a common thing, and states are actually voting that in. That if a baby at nine months happens to survive abortion, they're wanting to give parents the right to tell the doctors to go ahead and kill it outside the womb. That's where we're at as a society, talking about the innocent blood. That knows no part, that knows no political, that just, just look at the scriptures and see what that says. That's just the, if, if a mother's life is not in dire jeopardy, I don't know how you get to that point. And so, I'm afraid that there's a God of convenience a lot of times that people worship. Mm -hmm. it's not, and it's not just about that. It's more convenient to go fishing. It's more convenient to go play golf. More convenient to work some extra overtime. And, that, and when you get a chance to work overtime and things are hard, I'm not against it. I understand that. But if you don't need to and you choose to just do that because you rather do that, then, then, then come to church. It's not probably the best decision for you. There's, there's this God of convenience that people are worshiping in our, in our society today. And that's good. But what's that God going to do for you when you're really up against the calamity? It's what's it going to do for you. And I'll tell you that. The night I got the phone call in the middle of the night about my dad having a heart attack. They didn't have a phone in the hospital room, in the uh, hotel room. Dad woke mom up laying around his bed in the hotel there in Dry Ridge. Mom had to run to the one payphone they had at this hotel, call 911, wait for the police to get there, the ambulance to get there. She called me and said, Joseph, have you never prayed before? Pray now. I'm so glad, Miss Marcy, that I could call upon a God that could span the miles. I didn't have to be there. God could be there. I'm so glad. And that's the God that we serve, friends. He can be everywhere and anywhere at the same time. Amen. I can't do that. You can't do that. The God of convenience sure ain't going to do that for me. And I, I don't say all those things to say, you can't go play golf. You can't go up fish. I love to go fishing. I love to go hunting. I love to love things. But you can do that and still have God in your life. You can do that and still have God first in your life. And if God sometimes speaks to your heart because you let those priorities get out of balance, don't get mad at God. Get right. Just get it back in balance. It says in verse 35, we're drawn to a close. Yet thou sayest, because, because um, I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest I have not sinned. There's what the people are saying there, and there's what God saw. Right. And God said, you're not even hiding. You don't have to look hard to find your sins, to find your adultery. So it doesn't matter what you're saying. It's what God knows, because that's what, I mean... You know when you stand before God in judgment and the book's open, what are they going to look for? Are they going to look to see how many times you say, I didn't do it, I'm not a sinner, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, a bad person? No. You're going to look and see, is your name written in the Lamb of the Book of Life? Period. <laughs> Verse 36 says, Why gavest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, as thou was ashamed of Assyria. So you can go back to, you can go back to Egypt and worship the gods they had back there, but they'll do you no more good than the gods of Syria did when you were in bondage there. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him, and thy hands upon thy head, for the Lord hath rejected thy confidences, and thou shalt not prosper in them. Well, that it says it pretty well. We put our confidence in anything outside of God, that confidence is not going to prosper very much. When we put our confidence in him, that confidence will prosper. God will never let us down. Things don't always go the way that you think they should go. But God will never let you down. Just because they don't go the way you think, just because a prayer doesn't get answered the way you like it to get, does that mean that God's not at work in our life? No, it doesn't mean that. We can trust in Him. 
He's got, he's got our best interests in mind. He's had it in mind since the day we were formed out of Mother Belly. Amen. He knew us then, had a plan for us then, and has, knows what's best for us. And, uh, and we can trust in Him. So I, I pray we'd be just moved through His Word to grow, draw closer to Him, to take anything and everything to Him that might draw us farther away from Him, to not deny our sins, but to go to Him to take care of our sins. But like I said, uh, Apostle Paul said to, to, to live as Christ, but to die as gain is better. And um, that's the type of relationship we have with God. He's so good to us in the here and now, but the hereafter, the Bible says, is even far beyond better than that. But he's good to us in the here and now. We thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And so we got uh, we got a small handful of people who have been coming on and off on Sunday mornings that need the Lord. And we need to just keep living and praying and growing closer to God and having more spiritual power with Him than ever before so that the Holy Spirit can just continue to focus in like a laser in the hearts of those that need Him most. Trouble their hearts and bring them. And think back to what services were like when you felt people under conviction or when you yourself were under conviction. I don't know if it's just me. There are times it seemed like God had a big bullseye on my back and it just wasn't fair. It seemed like to Brother Jesse or Brother Brown or whoever would preach Brother Randy in that service that I, that I got saved at that revival meeting, it seemed like they knew every step I took that week. Amen. How's Amen. that happen? Not because they didn't follow me around. It's because God knows everything. Amen. And God can use what's going on in people's lives if His people, if His people get closer to Him, get less like themselves, less like me, and more like Him. So His power can even be more concentrated and work on people's hearts. And, uh, and let's just pray this that Brother Joe brought up in his request. Let's pray for those hands. And for every hand that's raised, who know, there may be one or two more that needed to be raised that couldn't find the courage. So let's pray for them. We will, uh, we'll, uh, I think Brother John's going to speak for us next Wednesday. We'll pick up on Chapter 3 the following Wednesday, so we'll look forward to that. Anyone got anything you'd like to add or any announcements to make before we dismiss? Thank you for coming tonight. Let's pray for our church. And let's pray for our nation and our leaders. And let's let God be the bright, shining light in our lives that the, the world and our society is so, so very bad. If all hearts and minds are clear, then let's stand. We'll be dismissed in word of prayer. That's Brother uh, Silas. We will be dismissed in prayer. Lord, we thank you for another day. Thank you, Lord, for what you do for us. Thank you for this little church, Lord. Thank you for the ones that sit up here tonight. Thank you for the ones that can't come. Lord, bless them too, God. We give you the praise for everything you do for us, Lord. Give everybody safe travel on the way home tonight, God. We just thank you, God, for everything. All the love you give us, Lord. And all the forgiveness you give us. And we see it, God. I know I do. So forgive me, Lord. Thank you, God, again. Amen. Amen. Amen.